In this video, we're going to be talking about caffeine. What is caffeine? The caffeine molecule is classified as an alkaloid, meaning that it is a nitrogen-based compound that is extracted from plants. The chemical formula for caffeine is C8H10N4O2 and is found in coffee. Caffeine, in its pure form, is found as odourless, bitter white crystals. As you could probably guess, that wasn't me speaking. That was Lawrence of SBS Radio. And if you thought I was going to be able to say all of that in a South East London accent, you're wrong. Where can you find caffeine? Well, as Lawrence said, you can find it in coffee, but also in energy drinks, tea and pill form. How does caffeine actually work? Well, it's classified as a nootropic and a powerful stimulant. But the main mechanism behind caffeine is that it's an antagonist to adenosine receptors. Adenosine causes sedation, relaxation, tiredness. So caffeine basically prevents this and therefore causes alertness, wakefulness. And now we're going to be looking at the benefits of caffeine and what the science actually says. Caffeine is one of the most researched supplements out there. We all know the benefits when it comes to strength and endurance performance. And if you want to find out more information, head over to examine.com and they'll tell you a list of benefits. But habitual caffeine, also associated with reduced risk of Alzheimer's, liver cancer, and some other additional health benefits. Now, caffeine also appears to increase testosterone levels, but hang on a minute, lads. It's not going to increase it to super physiological levels where you're going to get jacked. And how could I forget all of the fat burners on the market, which obviously have caffeine in? How to supplement with caffeine? How much? Three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. This is recommended by both examine.com and Jism. When? 30 to 60 minutes before exercise or your sporting event. There are lethal dosage. And there was one university which actually gave their students 30 grams, yes that's 30,000 milligrams in one go. But there is evidence that suggests those which don't have caffeine on a regular basis or at low dosages will have elevated heart rate and may seem longer effects of caffeine supplementation. To cycle or not to cycle all of the caffeine. So if you're taking caffeine for health benefits or disease prevention, then it's probably cool not to cycle it. When should you cycle it? If you're using caffeine for a exercise benefit or for your chosen sport, then maybe it'd be a good idea to cycle it if you do have quite a lot of caffeine habitually. So ways you could do this, you could reduce the amount of caffeine you have and maybe just keep it to around pre-workouts or when you actually have a, an important game. Or you could have a week off completely, have the withdrawals and then start taking it again. In summary, caffeine has positive benefits from both a performance and health aspect. If you're looking for dosage, again, three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. If you don't have a lot of caffeine, you could probably go a little bit lower. And if you have quite a bit of caffeine on a daily basis, you'd go more to the higher end, but start off low and work your way up. Where I see caffeine being key is when you are sleep deprived. If you're a parent or you have to get up early all the time, having that caffeine pre-workout may just help you have a little better session for that session, 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 session. Oh, that was sick. If you like the video, hit like. If you've not subscribed, subscribe. And comment below, how much caffeine do you have on a daily basis?